you know, genetic anthropologists doing a, a wide variety of things, but ultimately the idea is to understand more about human experience, where we, where we were, um, how we are now, and to remember when we haven't done right, how we've harmed one another. Um, I think it serves a purpose in helping us to remember this is who we are. This is, this is what we want to be. In terms of my own work in the Caribbean, that actually comes from my father. He was an avid genealogist, and he would actually tell me stories uh, that his mother told him about where our family was from. So I sort of picked things up where he left it, left it off uh, by incorporating you know, DNA to make connections between um, those in the Caribbean and those in West Africa. Aspects of lives that have been uh, broken as a result of like colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade. One thing I'm seeing more, not only in anthropology, but also in fields like public health, is a specific move to do community-engaged work, where the research isn't done for research sake or for some higher and lofty goals, but instead is keeping the community central. I was told in another island by one of my field work assistants that identifying as indigenous at some point was seen as a bad thing to do. It meant that you were, you know, less intelligent, promiscuous, all these sort of negative labels. Um, and she said seeing me, like repeatedly, I went back a couple of times doing this and talking about the community as, you know, as though they were there and they survived. She said it was giving her pause and made her think about who she was and how she identified it and sort of that history around why it was seen as a bad thing when it wasn't. Genetics adds to the narrative. In some cases, it can upend the narrative um, and really cause us to question uh, what, we, what we think we know.